Hey guys, it's Jonathan Bocher here from PlayGuitar.com. I want to give you an example today of something that you can learn in my new course, Dynamic Rhythm Guitar, which you can learn more about at PlayGuitar.com slash dynamics. But today we're going to look at a strum, or sorry, a picking pattern that begins to incorporate some strumming into the pattern. Now in the course we, we go a fair bit further on combining the world of strumming with the world of picking and you you know as soon as you start jamming them together you you gain access to these two worlds really uh, that a lot of people never really mix together you got oh this is a strumming song this is a picking song or this is a picking section and a strumming section but what if you start putting them together uh, it really can help your playing become more expressive because let's face it if you want to your playing to be a little bit more expressive than just straight strumming, you kind of start to, kind of have to start getting into lead lines. And by lead lines, I don't mean solos. I mean single note lines. And well, picking is a single note line. Even something as simple as this, that's a single note line. It's just a G chord played in, our, in an arpeggio, but it's a single note line. So if you can start mixing your strumming up with these little single note lines and just highlighting certain notes, as you're playing along, it can really help. Anyways, let's dive into this uh, example. This is actually example 10 from the course. And uh, what you heard me playing there at the beginning is what it's gonna sound like. The thing to note here is that the R in the um, notation below indicates root string, okay? So whatever chord progression you wanna apply this to, you gotta look at your chords and figure out what's my root note? And in the case of, we're going to use G, E minor, C, and D, or some variations of that. And um, our root notes are here, third string, sorry, third fret, sixth string. The G, the E right there, open sixth string. Then we got a C on the fifth string, third fret, and then we've got a D on the open fourth string. Okay, those are our root notes for this example, for these chords. Uh, if you need to know more about how to find a root note, then you can go back. I've, I've done other videos on that, um, which you can find on playguitar.com. Um, under the chord theory or guitar theory section, stuff like that. Um, but uh, don't have time to explain that today. But those are the root notes. That's what the R represents. Okay, You could apply this to A, key of D, whatever you want. The root note changes with the chord. Okay. Um, and then the numbers simply represent the string that we're going to play. So, third string, second string, etc. right? And if the, one, the spots where you see it in brackets there, the two and the one in brackets, that indicates we're going to be playing those strings simultaneously. In other words, we're going to be strumming them. So, let's... Um, Let's jump into this here. We're gonna go down, down. So down on the root note, on the root string, then down on the third string, and then we're gonna strum down on the first and second strings, catch those together. So root string, third string, first and second string strum together. Then we're gonna come back up, and on the way up, we're gonna catch that second string and that basically resets us back up to the top here, right? We just did a half bar, four eighth notes, and then we go back up to the top and we do it again. And that gets us a full bar and then we do a chord change, okay? So in a moment we're gonna turn on a drum track so that we can try to lock in our picking to that drum track. It's, I find it's quite a helpful exercise to do that. It's just like playing with the metronome but a lot more interesting and a lot more inspiring too, I find. And uh, all, the, all the examples in the course are, are done with drum tracks and you can have the drum tracks as well to uh, practice with. But um, in this particular example, we're going to use a 75 beat per minute track. And if you listen to it, the hi-hat is, is going one and two and three and four and, right? So the hi-hat is being hit every eighth note. And then you got a bass and the snare and they're on the quarter notes alternating, right? So... For this particular example, we're looking at eighth notes in the through the whole pattern, right? So 
you want to be locking in every single time you, you pick a note, you want to be locking in to that hi-hat. And the hi-hat is kind of the higher pitched one that you'll hear going in the background, right? So why don't we turn on this drum track and apply this picking pattern and see what it sounds like. That's what this picking pattern sounds like. As you can see, the second time through, I started to change things up a little bit. First off, I went from a straight E minor to an E minor 7. Chord modifications are an excellent way to start helping build things up, add a few more dynamics to what you're playing, and, and express something a little bit differently than, than you would with just normal chords, right? Um, and we talk a lot about that in the course. But uh, And then I went from a C major, I went to a C add 9 which is a really nice sounding chord, and uh, I use it quite a bit. And um, I may have even thrown a D sus4 in there, just ever so briefly. And then I changed up the picking pattern itself just a little bit on the second time through. And what I was doing was I was going like that, okay? So I was going root note, third string, the little mini strum there, the first and second strings, and then on the last eighth note, where we would normally just hit that two, the second string, I'm instead changing that to sixteenth notes. Okay, and I'm going to hit the second string and then the third string. And I find what that does is that that little pair of sixteenth notes there just kind of wants to kick you into the next chord. And so I only did it on the second of the two of the two patterns that we find in each bar. So you go through it normally for the first time through, half bar, and then the second half of the bar, you add in those 16th notes at the very end, which is just before your chord change, and they kick you into the next chord. So a few little ideas there, how you can modify this. Uh, I'm sure you can find other ways to modify this. You could try strumming three strings instead, or try strumming different strings, or go to like the fourth string instead of the third string on that first uh, hit right after the root note. A lot of different ways that you can start modifying up these patterns and creating something that fits the song that you're playing a little bit more closely, right? So that's kind of what it's all about, is to learn how to modify things so that you can make your playing a lot more expressive. And that's really what the, the whole point of the Dynamic Rhythm and Guitar course is all about. And you can learn more about that at playguitar.com slash dynamics. So... Have a great day, and we'll see you again next time.